Hey there, this is Pasta Tabitha Purple. We are doing our daily devotionals. We are on day 25, 25 people. We're doing quite well. We're ticking along nicely. You know, just keep going. The coronavirus will pass. We can get through this. I know we can. Let's just focus on other things to do. So our daily devotional gives us a talking point for others. Today's daily devotional is from the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6 and verse 34. That is Matthew chapter 6 verse 34 and it says this, therefore don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Now, what I want to do is unpack all the ways that this verse has been used badly and tell you, please read in context, read in context, read in context, okay? So some ways that it's been used badly is to talk about the fact that people shouldn't be saving, let's say, or thinking about that because actually we're not promised tomorrow, okay? Some people use it to say that actually planning for uh, rainy days or planning your future or planning ahead is not good because of course you're worrying then and you're placing into tomorrow don't do that uh, the list is kind of endless of how this text is misused but what I really want to focus on is this idea of anxiety that we have um, when it talks about this it's saying don't worry about tomorrow I think the word worry is the the key linchpin here don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow has enough worry for itself when you get there there is enough trouble for you to start again with your worrying now I think it talks about a mindset of anxiety and I think that this is one thing that people really don't understand in today's society when we talk about anxiety um, we often talk about it in two ways one very dis dismissive uh, you know, why are you anxious? Just get over it. Stop being silly. You know, blah, blah, blah. But with people who really suffer with anxiety disorders, this is really difficult. And one of the things that Jesus is saying is really hinge yourself in the time in which you are. So hinge yourself. If you have anxiety, if you suffer in, with anxiety in this way, if you worry endlessly about all the things that could happen, you need to hinge yourself in the here and now. And so when psychologists and counsellors talk about this, they do try to encourage people to focus on what they are doing now and how they are living and what practices they're doing that will help safeguard tomorrow. Because of course, that's what it's about. If I make good choices now, I can't stave off everything. I can't account for everyone else, but I can put myself in a good position for tomorrow. So if I don't just blow through my wages, but I pay my tithe and I set aside some for savings and I pay all my bills, then when I get to tomorrow, I will be able to cope with what's happening because I've paid my bills and I've done those things and those things will not overcome me. So that's an, ex an anxiety that I can minimise. If I have a propensity to have anxiety about things that are really out of my control, things that I really cannot account for, like world events. I mean, we're literally going through something no one, I guess, could have predicted except every movie that's ever lived that has like this kind of theme of some bio virus or something, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. But, you know, if you have a tendency to worry about these things, then, you know, hinging in the here and now, what can I do today that will help me feel better tomorrow so I can always have a go back? For a lot of people, they have a go bag that just helps them to hinge some of their anxiety into something tangible they can do today that will help them tomorrow. Because tomorrow is going to come and you will have worries enough, you know, and it will overwhelm. And I think it's not about minimizing people who suffer with anxiety. We have in within our family um, a child who suffers with anxiety and it's not a joke. I mean, it can become overwhelming to everybody in the family. It can really be quite debilitating to have uh, somebody who's worrying and you never know what the anxiety is necessarily about until maybe it's too late. Maybe they haven't slept for days, you know, and it disrupts the rhythm of everything. And so when I hear I have empathy for when I hear people talk about anxiety and they talk about how much stress that they go through and how difficult life everyday life can be but remember that Jesus is offering you a way he's not talking about tomorrow a long way off he's saying let's stay in today let's go day by day let's not go too far let's not race ahead I've I have tomorrow Jesus has got tomorrow don't worry about tomorrow Jesus has got tomorrow what you need to take care of is the here and now can you, do you have things within your control? 
do those things. Is it outside of your control? Then let those things go. And those are really critical to really trying to manage your everyday anxiety and the everyday stress. And at a time when we have corona and people are on lockdown and, you know, nobody quite knows when it's going to end. And there's a lot of anxiety. Schools are out. Work is out. You know, some people are working harder than they worked before. And they're wondering, OK, listen, I need a vacation. But vacations are not coming because they work in critical services or because, you know, the job is on the line if you don't go to work. And so for a lot of people, this time is more stressful than it would be normally. It has more anxiety. But here's a word. Stay in today. I can't account for when this is going to be over. I can't tell you how many people are going to be affected. We don't know all of the answers to that. What we do know is what we have within our realm today. Wash your hands. Be safe. Look after your family. Do your best, work hard, do what you can. And where you cannot, rest. Rest well, take time, pray and breathe because you cannot do everything. And so I think this is really a word for today. Have a look at this. Matthew chapter 6, verse 34. Look at the whole chapter because it's a really beautiful, beautiful part of the Beatitudes and the Sermon on the Mount. Well, have a blessed day. Bye-bye.